Hey, what's going on everyone? Joe Menza here. And for this video, I had to speed it up, otherwise it'd be about an hour and a half long. And I didn't really want to put you through that. You can always slow the speed down a little bit if you need to see something. But uh, this one here was inspired by Thomas Kincaid. Uh, and more so about the bright colors and the flowers. Um, this is a, a, a going to be a waterfall scene. Not a copy of anything, but... Uh, more so like an inspired scene, and mainly with the colors. So, basically I'm putting in sort of the backdrop here. I'm putting in a, uh, started off with some yellow tones and some ultramarine blue mixed in. So a combination ultramarine blue and some cad yellow and some Payne's gray. So essentially I kind of just want this background scene here painting outside today um, this one here is a little bit more complicated than my usual stuff but I had been listening to a, uh, a an audio book called Billion Dollar Painter and it's about the life of uh, or the career really of Thomas Kincaid Ama amazing uh, amazing read um, and what he was able to accomplish you know a lot of people uh, really liked his work and a lot of critics were down on his work um, but you know the popularity of it I think people were drawn to the bright colors kind of reminds me of candy um, I actually own a couple of Kincaids um, but they're not the usual cottage type stuff uh, one is a religious type painting and then the other one is is, is actually a cabin sort of in the woods um, but it has the usual stuff the colors and that so for this one, I thought I'd do like kind of a waterfall since I like those kind of scenes. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm building up, I'm using the hake brush. And I'm building up some dark tones. Those dark tones are kind of needed for really setting off the bright colors I've found. I'm giving it a little spray with the spray bottle. Now, I would say, if you're watching, don't get attached to any one particular thing because um, I, I go over things kind of heavily and I make sort of changes on the fly. But this will give you an idea of my process, too, which uh, is always interesting. I was able to find, if you go to Thomas Kincaid's channel, you can actually watch. There's a couple of videos he has where he's working in the studio. He actually starts out using acrylic and then he goes to oil and he sprays a... A coating over the uh, uh, the acrylic and then puts uh, liquid on the surface and then he goes over and he spends hours and hours then on the details which isn't something I'm into doing this is more of the fast and loose even though it took an hour and a half is because you know I kind of got caught up in the details but I had a really good time doing it um, and I know a lot of people like a lot of color I tend to paint things as realistically as I see them but when you see a lot of colors a lot of times things pop so if you're interested in doing a certain uh, sort of uh, Kincaid sort of style in the watercolor you know when you use acrylics they tend to dry fast so it cuts your work time in unless you use a retarder and if you use you know oils we know that's messy um, so the watercolor really is easy from the perspective of cleanup and use and being able to wash up. So at the top of my waterfall here, I'm putting in some darker, sort of some phthalo blue mixed in with some regular blue. And I'm really trying to get that dark, a dark effect while leaving a little bit of light in the middle here. So I know I just went over everything I kind of just did, but it wasn't really going to work uh, what I was going for. But I do have that still in the center. So we can see down the middle in the top where I've left some light and it looks like maybe there's some trees in the distance. And then I've left the area where the waterfall is going to come down.
So yeah, very interesting life. I mean, he was able to get, I think, a painting in one out of every 20 homes. And he was able to, you know, put together a mil multi-million dollar business. I think I hit a billion, four billion dollars at one point. Um, so very, very interesting life. It's a shame the man had uh, alcoholism, the disease of alcoholism. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's sad that uh, his life came to an end early. I think he was in his 50s, 54, I think it was. But I, I appreciate his work. I like the bright colors. I kind of tend to think of it as kind of candy-like. Um, it's eye candy. You know, you see the bright colors and it really draws you in. And when I posted this one on social media, I got a lot of, a lot of good responses. So I kind of knew I was uh, in the ballpark, so to speak. So again, I've decided to build up these tones even more. Again, this is my first time doing something like this, so a lot of experimentation along the line here. So if you attempt to do something like this, you can kind of get an idea of what you can do, maybe improve on it. So more of a purple, a deep bluish purple in these background areas. I don't want to use black. Um, that's just too dark. Now I've kind of started putting in a little bit of red. I'll be using pyrrole red for this one. That's a Daniel Smith color. And just to keep it wet, I've been, I'm giving it a, a spray. And I'm painting in almost a flat position, maybe at about a 30 degree angle because I don't want it running too much. So I'm starting to add some red tones just to kind of get an idea of where I'm going to be at red-wise. So you can see here now where I'm starting to sprinkle in that red. And it's basically still too dark. So we're going to need something to make that pop a little bit more as, as the painting goes on here. So even some darker tones on top for this side. I kind of feel like right now this painting is broken down into almost four quadrants. And it looks a little too geometric. So I'm going to have to kind of make that look a little bit more natural. Coming in with some cad yellow, some green tones here to make that foliage look a little greener. A lot of buildup of layers here, essentially. A lot of buildup of wet into wet layers. Again, adding a little bit more red. As you can see, that if flowers it doesn't really pop enough now. With the green now, I'm coming forward. Technically, you're not supposed to really go from dark to light in watercolor. But it can be done um, with certain colors and using a little bit of white. 
it is doable. Now, Cad Yellow's probably, it stands out the most um, over other colors, so I like to use it for foliage. And that's essentially straight out of the tube. You'll see me when I use the, when I use the fan brush, I'm, I'm really using it straight. Um, if I'm using the hake, then there's probably water on the hake and it's not, uh, it's not straight out of the tube in theory because there's still water on, on the hake. But with reference to like, say a fan brush, then I'm coming in with, there's going to be very, very little water and what water is already on the paper because I'm spraying it down periodically. So again, I'm coming in, I'm just trying to make some uh, darker tones. I'm giving it a little spray, making that run in together a little bit, getting some darks to flow down where the waterfall is. I'm going to use white there because I want that also to stand out. I want the water to look, you know, nice and bright. And I'm using a tissue just to keep that area open so I don't get too dark from the foliage running down in there. But I think you can see where I'm going now. Again, keeping it wet is pretty essential if you're doing something like this that's going to be uh, take your time, you know. Uh, and it, you want to do it more flat so it doesn't run too much. Now here I'm putting a little white in. I was looking at one of Kincaid's paintings and he had like little white buds in the trees, but the way this looks now, there's four quadrants, like I said, surrounding this waterfall area. And so that to me looked a little uh, overdone. So we're gonna do something about that, but now on the right side, I'm taking in some very dark. I know it's probably hard to see. Um, I'm, I'm rubbing in some tree trunks using a card and some very thick paint. Just kind of brushing that in a little bit. Again, giving it a little bit of a spray, scraping in some highlights on the tree. Certain areas I'm keeping dark because I know it's really all about the light. It's all about the color and the light. Now for the white, because I wanted it to dry a little quicker for the video, I decided to use a little bit of acrylic white, and I didn't want the white to... A lot of times white will dry back, and white will uh, bleed into and make the colors look chalkier. So with experimenting and so forth... Now for this, I mean, this could work if you look at the way the trees are. If I was doing more of a scene that encompassed more of those kind of trees. Um, it's almost like you got four paintings here within a mini paintings in a painting in a sense. But I used acrylic white because I knew it would dry quicker, wouldn't, wouldn't uh, blend in with the rest of the paints. So there's nothing wrong with using a little bit of acrylic. I've seen artists do it. Um, and that's the only color that I've used acrylic with. <clears throat> and honestly, I mean, white gouache is so expensive. 
Um, I've gone through quite a few tubes. Um, you know, acrylic can be used with water, which I've done here. I think if I just had a scene of that left upper corner looking like that, I think it would be a very nice scene. I'll do one of those in a future video. Um, now on the right side, I added a little pyro red and I mixed in a little bit of white, a little bit of that acrylic white. And I've got uh, some pinks and some red hues. And then I'm doing the same in that yellow area there, getting more yellows to pop. And I've also added a little bit of blue. If you'll notice some of his paintings, they had like the blue flowers. What do they call those? Blue bells, I think. So I've kind of taken away a lot of that white that was up there because I really didn't think that fit. So from here going forward is mostly going to be working with the fan brush. Two, three different sizes of fan brush just to vary it up. And a little bit of toothbrush work and flicking some, some paint in. So there's really a lot of layers to this. I'll put up the, the photo when I'm done, but you'll see the little tiny brush strokes and the, and the layering. <clears throat> So again, just coming through with the fan brush. Now, the way I'm working this now is I'm adding little variations of color, yellows, blues, a um, little bit of white here and there mixed in with those colors until I really feel like I have a randomness, I guess I can say, that, that I can, that I like. Um, certain things or if they don't stick out to me right, I'll kind of go over until I just, something pleasing to my eye. It's pretty hot out here today. I, uh, painting this, it's, uh, I decided for some reason to stand up. I don't know. I don't usually stand when I paint. But uh, for some reason, I decided to stand up, which was a mistake for as long as I spend painting. Sometimes I feel like when I'm standing, when I'm painting, I get more, I don't know, more focus. If you're not too relaxed, you're really into the work. So I've got back into the cad yellow, and I tapped a little bit on the top, the treetops there. That's all I can really say is I kept working on it until I really felt like it looked, I guess, right until I, I was happy with it. You can see my little bit of white there on the board. Now, I'm going to start putting this in now because I kind of want to get the feel of how this is going to look. So I'm dropping in that waterfall down the middle. And the fan brush, what you want to do is you kind of want to go like I just did, this stroke of the brush, it, roll it over straight and then a, an arc so that it looks like the water is spilling over. And I'm adding a little dark in there. It needs, it needs a little, a lot of times you're doing a waterfall, it needs a little darkness behind it if you're going to put the white on top so that the foam of the water stands out on top. So I'm, I just ran that white a little bit down so that it looks like maybe it's going somewhere else too. And just have some random splashes coming in here and over the side.
So again, I'm coming in with the Pyro Red. See, now you can see on the right side how that shadowing kind of helps. It's a little bit of, speaking of shadows, there's a little bit, I'm under an umbrella. Just to stay out of the heat on my patio table. Um, there's a little bit of a shadow over the top. Kind of looks weird there. I think the next time I go to do one like this, I can probably do it a little quicker because I have an idea of how to get there faster having done this. So I'm going back into my yellow here. A lot of that white will be will be uh, not visible, but I'm going into my, my CAD yellow again and I'm gonna make those treetops more yellow. This it looks a little more natural to me. I may not cover all the white, but that's fine. Maybe it looks like a little light coming through. Let me move my, let me move my uh, easel here because of that weird shadow. I think now. I think that's better. You could probably see better, hopefully. So again, just blending in the foliage. Now I'm really going into that red, um, a little over, a little overdone, but really into the red, with a little bit of white mixed in, a little bit of the acrylic white. So it's not as transparent. And it's okay if it's a little too heavy because it, it'll be underneath and then if I go on top, then it'll really pop with the red. So again, just coming in with the fan brush, playing with different little colors. And as I see stuff fading back, I'll come back in with brighter brighter colors here as you see on the to tops of the trees just having that light catch it just brighter and brighter so that's what i mean by inspired it's the the colors of his paintings is is really the the inspiration behind this one my wife always tells me she likes uh when I put a lot of color in the paintings. As a matter of fact, this one she's already called dibs on, so this one will not be in my eBay shop. I've been a little lax lately in posting new art there. So now I'm coming back in with a drier brush. I'm coming down and creating that little arc of the waterfall falling down. I really want that glistening and bright. They used to have a Thomas Kincaid gallery not far from my house. They had other art in there too, but uh, 
you'd go in there and they would lower the lights down to show you how the light, you know, still illuminated. I guess he, his painting style was called luminosity. And the he would turn the light down, or, or whoever was in there would turn the light down, and they would show you, uh, you know, how that popped in the dark. But remember, all of his paintings that you purchased, those were actually prints um, with a special process. And then they would have highlighters, they called them master highlighters, and they would come in and then they would put additional color on top. So you could actually buy your painting, you could take it over when they had a highlighter come. And then that highlighter would put uh, additional little specks of paint on there. So I'm taking a card here with a little bit of white on it. A little bit of white and a little bit of brown. Sorry, my, I'm pressing this pretty hard, as you can see, trying to get uh, little highlights on the trees so that just they stand out just a little bit so you know that they're there. And then a little bit more dark on the other side. Then they also, they had one time a trailer came, this is, I'm, I'm going back, I think 15 years. They had a, a trailer come and get dropped off in the parking lot and it was a, some kind of Thomas Kincaid event and then you could go into the trailer and supposedly in this trailer were the real paintings that they had on display. These weren't prints, and then they had special lighting. They could lower the lighting, and they had a couple of his earlier ones from his Impressionist era when he went by the name Robert Gerard was his brush name before he went uh, into Thomas Kincaid. And he, he painted at a very young age, so he had been painting for, it's got, had to be 45 years of painting. You know, he was a young guy. I mean, he definitely had skill. Whether or not you liked his paintings, you thought they were a little too fantasy element, um, you know, what have you. Um, definitely the skills were there. I mean, he could paint anything. He did one of NASCAR. Uh, he did, actually, if you look online, you can see where he did Fenway Park in watercolor. That's an interesting painting. I don't know how many watercolors he did. There's another painting on his channel where he does a lighthouse scene with uh, pastels. So he definitely could do a lot of different mediums. He used an airbrush, he had wax pencils, um, pretty much you name it. But I was surprised to learn that he used acrylics, at least in his later years, as the basis for his paintings and then oiled over the top. So I don't know if you would have to refer to that as mixed media or not. I don't know what percentage of using a different media would technically make it mixed media. So I'm coming back in with a little more reds now, getting that to pop. And I put a mat on top just to give myself an idea that I was where I wanted to be so you can kind of get an early... I have an old mat that's got a lot of crud on it, so um, I don't worry too much about messing up a, a nice mat. So I'm taking my fan brush and just kind of accenting those trees a little bit more. And Kincaid, he had a lot of thoughts. If you watch that one video, I think it's called Inside Ivy Gate Studio. And he talks about how the color bounces off your rep retina and optical nerve. I don't know. I don't know if that's all true or not, but... Uh, a lot of people bought his work, that I can tell you that. A lot of it, I think, was marketing. I mean, if, you know, you had an artist that people liked, but then he had a guy that was doing marketing, and then they sold uh, licensing, Hallmark, ornaments, Bradford Exchange had uh, uh, Christmas trees and all kinds of things that they used. Uh, Hallmark uh, greeting cards. They were on greeting cards. I mean, it was a time when that, that stuff was everywhere. Calendars.
I think that's where a lot of people kind of parted ways on how they felt about him. They felt that it was, you know, too much of mass marketed. People have an idea of what art kind of should be and to mass market something like that. You know, I mean, he was, they were traded on the New York Stock Exchange at one time. Very interesting stuff. I like to go into and watch, I was watching uh, a movie they had about Van Gogh and I watched another one about Picasso and another one about Pollock. A good way to get inside other artists' heads and what was their emotion or feeling and, you know, different things. Highly recommend, you know, doing that in addition to watching a lot of videos and trying different things, you know. Some people have said, oh, you know, you're like Bob Ross of watercolor, which is uh, a high compliment, I think. I like the idea of the Bob Ross be because not so much in what he painted, but the fact that he inspired a lot of people. And that's like one of the things that I hope I'm doing later down the road in retirement years. It'd be fun to teach, I think, you know. Uh, in-person type classes. Um, so for that example, to know that you're inspiring, maybe you'll see some artists down the road that'll say, hey, I remember this one guy and he made it seem so fun and this and that, and that's what I got into it. So for that part of it, yeah. But, you know, you look at the different styles out there. So I've tried to use other styles for inspiration. I think a lot of artists do that over the years and they... Uh, incorporate little bits and pieces that's what's good is incorporating little bits and pieces from things you've learned along the years and then you add a piece of yourself in there and that's what makes art a great community and a great community of people if you go on our facebook uh, and you see the ron ranson group very inspiring man that passed away a few years ago um, sort of pioneered the use of the hake brush in popularity and uh, not fiddling and having a good time with it. And you check out our group. Uh, we got a really good group of people there that are sharing good community. We've got about we've got over eight hundred members there. So you can see now I got the trees with the cad yellow going, and I use cad yellow hue. By the way, I I like to use. Uh, you can use Hansa yellow. There's a lot of yellows. You can use lemon yellow. But I like to use a cad yellow hue because it doesn't have the toxic properties to it that cadmium traditionally has. So slowly but surely here, you can see I'm defining... The painting, refining into what I want. And I enjoyed doing this one. I would do more uh, in time. Maybe I'll go back and look at ones I did earlier, redo them and kind of bring more color into it. I was before about getting a sense of realism in addition to the impressionism. So impressionism with realism, where if you looked at it, you said, oh, that looks like a photo. This is a little bit more crossing into the fantasy realm. It's taking a scene and really just pumping up the colors. And so you look at something like this and you'd say, I'd like to see that scene. It sort of takes you away. You can go see a waterfall and it's a beautiful scene, but when you see these enhanced photos and things, it's sort of a fantasy scene it takes you away from you know the norm into this fantasy almost like being in another planet or something because if you look at Kincaid's paintings I mean there really is no place on earth that looks quite like what he painted there is no scene like that not that I'm aware of Okay, so that's it for this painting. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to go ahead and put this in its virtual frame. Here's just kind of a slow-mo of the uh, close-up of everything. And then here's the virtual frame. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe.